Okay, it says live now. Okay, we are live on Facebook. So good evening, Rihanna. We'll just wait a couple of seconds for people to join us. Okay. I'm going to say a good, very good evening to Lionel Frank. I see he's already on. To Anusha Chetty, <laughs> Ishara Gavinder, always online, biggest fans. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Just want to get a go ahead. <laughs> great. It's so good to have you here today, Rihanna. Um, good Thank evening to so all our Facebook. Okay. Good evening to all our Facebook Live um, viewers. Thank you once again for joining us on this Thursday evening. I hope you've uh, poured yourself a good cuppa and you're sitting back, relaxing for a, a wonderful and a powerful um, time uh, over the next hour. Before I introduce Rihanna Moy. Um, I would like to just share with you quickly the story of how Succeed started and, um, and just introduce you to the evening. So Succeed started with uh, myself and Richard um, Maestri linked at the um, 30 year school reunion, high school reunion. And what happened was that we, we co-led a community project in, in Tongat and it was so exciting and, and many, many conversations and many links and, and God incidences later, we realized that we were carrying the same dream that God had placed a seed in both of us that was very similar. And so we started the journey of Succeed. And Succeed is a nonprofit organization where, where we want to make um, the preservation of human dignity something that is a norm. We want people to become completely self-sustaining. We see a farm garden, be it in a container or a patch of ground in a person's property um, as a norm in every South African home. We believe also um, in entrepreneurial skills as well as some financial skills. And uh, we wanna take coding to children as well. So it's our dream that we wanna take it out of the private school sector and make it completely accessible to every child. And mostly also, we want to introduce you to our Women's Month project. So this is Seeds of Hope, and we're campaigning Women's Month, where we're speaking about the reusable sanitary towels and why that's important to women. But more about that later. So um, without any further ado, I just want to introduce <laughs> you to the beautiful Rihanna Moy. Rihanna is a Mrs. Globe 2015. She is also a, a senior risk manager in a, one of the leading financial institutions in South Africa. She's the mom of two sons, a 27-year-old and a 23-year-old is Brandon mm -hmm. Delon. And a beautiful friend of mine, we were just chatting before this, and we've been friends uh, probably 18 years. Uh, one of the first people to meet when I moved to um, Johannesburg. I think maybe we have a, um, a freeze on your side, Rihanna. Let me just chat to her quickly. We seem to be having a, a, a freeze on the technology side. I just wanna to chat to her on her phone. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Doing this from home is quite a, quite a challenge. So we've lost Rihanna and we're going to just wait for her to rejoin. But in the meantime, um, let me just on. Sorry, it's just her internet. I've just got a message from her. So thank you for your patience. While we're waiting for her to rejoin, let me tell you the story of, of how, I, um, how I went to the Eastern Cape last year and why Rebel is so important to me and why sanitary towels are such an important, um, such an important thing in, in our country and in our context. 
Okay. So uh, Rihanna's coming back on board. I see her now, just a second. There you are. There you are. Just to, uh, to unmute Rihanna. Okay, unmute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Thank <laughs> you. Welcome back. Welcome Thank you back. so much. <laughs> Thank you. I was just saying how interesting this is that we're doing it from our homes. And I want to thank you for yes. your time. Uh, I know it's been a long work day. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about your journey into the Mrs. South Africa, representing South Africa in over 60 different countries. Um, what was that like? And, and what was that experience about? Yes, thank you so much, Nishani, and good evening to all those that are joining us in uh, on Facebook Live this evening. Um, you know, I had the wonderful opportunity to represent my country in China in December of 2015. Um, it was literally five days of, of preparation that I needed to, to make before um, jetting off to China. Um, you know, God just orchestrated it that the winner couldn't attend and me as first runner up in Miss South Africa of that year was able to go and represent my country. And like anybody that would tell you, um, you know, to represent your country, such a wonderful honor and such a privilege. I was just full with so much excitement, um, anxiety and in the midst of fear, not knowing what to anticipate but just so excited to go to China and to compete amongst these 60 countries representing, uh, you know, my beautiful country of South Africa. And how is it that you, you kind of stepped into, stepped in in the last five days and God gave yeah. you the title? What was that Absolutely. like? Is, is it really one of those moments where you... <laughs> Oh, it was so surreal, Nishani, for me. I'd like to wow. think of it, you know, when I was yes, crowned as... Can you hear me? Yeah, we seem to be, we seem to be dipping in and out, Rihanna. Of okay. The, uh, just here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Is that a little bit better? Okay. Um, I was saying that for me, um, you know, just being able to, to, to go and represent my country, um, literally five days to prepare, um, not having much time, um, you know, not even having an opportunity to, to look at the competition. I'd like to look at it as God saying, you know, you winning first runner up is Mrs. South Africa. Uh, I've given you this opportunity. Let me see what you do with it and then I'll bless you with more. You know, um, so for me, it was just, I, I cannot even explain to you the moment when they called out my name. Um, in fact, they had to call out South Africa twice uh, because the first time when they called out my name as the winner, I didn't even register with me. Um, I, I just stood frozen and uh, they had to actually call my name out again. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't respond like your typical beauty queens respond. You often see on TV when they, you know, they call out the winner's name. It seems like they had the perfect yes. pose. Um, I just, you know, my eyes were flooded with tears and I was just so in awe of God and for this honor that he placed, you know, upon my life that he chosen me. Um, so I was just really filled with so much appreciation and so much gratitude in that moment. Yeah. And what does that mean uh, for you? Because I'm sure that comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of um, hard work that follows. Yeah, you know, for okay. me, I, you know, it wasn't. Uh, can you hear me? Shani, can you hear me? Yeah, you seem to be breaking up again. Okay. Yeah, just, just a little adjust bit my up, AirPods. So yeah. Okay. There we go. Now. Is that yeah. a little bit better? Okay, perfect. That is good. Okay. Yeah, not much, okay, you know, so changed for me. Not much changed for me after I won. You know, I've always been somebody who's loved to, you know, get involved in community work, you know, especially with causes that are dear to my heart. Um, you know, getting involved in, in women and children programs, especially when I can encourage and uplift and motivate um, children and women who have suffered from abuse. Um, 
And yeah. so, you know, also working for an organization like Nedbank, who invest in, you know, in their staff and also come along and support them, um, you know, with a small financial contribution in the causes that they are passionate about. You know, so it wasn't, you know, a lot, a lot that changed in my life. In fact, I think it was an opportunity for, uh, yes. you know, many more people to partner with me and come alongside me in supporting those organizations. Yes, you know, people look up to you, young girls look up to you as a role model. Um, but I, I don't think, you know, I changed as much or a lot changed for me. I think it was just really um, a greater platform for me that God had enabled um, for people to come alongside and support me in the causes that I'm passionate about. Yeah, great. And what does beauty mean to you, Brianna? Oh, wow. What you does know, beauty yeah. mean to you? <laughs> Beauty, you know, <laughs> I think society places such a huge focus on the external um, and the and you know the physical nature of beauty, and so does yes. social media and TV and magazines and and you know so much emphasis is on the physical nature of beauty. You going to say something? I was going to say, and you are the face of Mangonani, are, are you not? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just I've been so privileged to to be a brand ambassador for their brand um, for almost 10 years now, you know, yeah. and it's just been such a wonderful opportunity. Um, but just further to add on to that question, you know, you asked me about, you know, beauty and what does that mean to me and, you know, talking about social media and mm. TV and magazines and how they portray beauty. I'd like to think of beauty as, you know, a woman is not just appealing on the outside. I'd like to mm. think that they are the inner parts of her that are just as appealing. Um, and it's not so much of what you look like, uh, but it's more of who you are. And it sounds very cliche when you say that it's the beauty that shines from within, but it really does shine from within. Yes. You know, it's the, the yes. kindness and the compassion and the gentleness and the confidence that shines through. So for me, that's more definition of beauty than just the exterior and the physical appearance. Yeah, so it's really the fruits of the spirit then that come, Absolutely. That come forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what makes um, what makes supporting children and women who have been abused or have suffered abuse important to you? Where, where does that come from? Yeah, you know, I mean, you, Nishani, you and I have been friends for almost 18 years. We met when you was uh, you, when you were still working from Ned, at Nedbank, and you know, we we used to um, carpool together, and we shared many yes. stories along those journeys. And so you would know, but just for the audience tonight, you know, um, and and I suppose a lot of women, you know, could share their testimony and their story, and we all have a story, uh, but mine is one of, of of you know, I come from a dysfunctional home, uh, you know, growing up, I faced many different types of abuse, physical, emotional, mental. Um, and so, you know, that's why the cause is so close and dear to my heart. You know, I think of the many people that came into my life and mentored me. Um, and, and I wouldn't, you know, I'd like to say with God, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and so I, I think, you know, we need to reach young people, especially those that are suffering and going through abuse at an impressionable age. Um, and I'd, I'd like to, you know, to, to see them have a different outcome. Um, and, you know, young people are so discouraged and we, we look at gender based violence, which is so much on the increase going through this pandemic, mm -hmm. especially, um, you know, there are so many women and young children you know, going through situations of abuse that are so feeling so hopeless, feeling so discouraged, um, feeling like they don't have a way out, um, that the situation is never going to change. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd like to to be the person who shares with them my testimony uh, of coming from a home of abuse, growing up um, a mom at the, when I was at the you know, age of 13, eventually she chose a way out of suicide. Um, yeah. You know, and I suppose many people that are going through abuse also turn to suicide. And I'd like to be somebody who speaks hope um, and to speak life rather and to encourage and to motivate and uplift. So that's why it's so close and dear to my heart. Hmm. And having had the personal experience, Rihanna, I mean, having grown up as a young girl and lost your mom at such yeah. a tender age of yeah. 13, a very, very uh, yeah. pivotal time in a young yeah. woman's life. I mean, here you stood up with yeah. the confidence 
uh, to represent your country uh, in something that that you know where you experienced almost condemnation and 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 trackness, yes, yes. and yet yes, you you yes. you you kind of succeeded that, and you you've radiated um, or reflected a love of God and a light within. Where does that mm -hmm. come from, and, and what is critical to that? I'd like to, you confidence. know, I'd like to believe that, you know, it's, it's, it's that Godfidence. I don't, I, you know, instead of saying confidence, I think it's that Godfidence that I have. Um, it's definitely my relationship with God, you know. Um, I think during this pandemic, it's definitely my relationship and my faith has deepened. Um, I remember as a young girl growing up, uh, my mom was Catholic, but, you know, the beautiful memories that I have of her is going to church every Sunday. Um, and I remember, you know, the visions that I remember of her is always on her knees praying. And, you know, she instilled in us a, you know, at a very early age to always pray. And so, you know, I continued that as I grew up and throughout my yes. years. And my relationship with God just matured and just deepened. Um, you know, I was privileged enough but also at a young age, um, you know, to, to give my life to the Lord. And when I look at, you know, where God has taken me from, and where he's brought me to, I can just stand in awe of, of, of everything he's done in my mm. life. Um, and I choose not to focus on my past. I choose to focus on my future. Um, you know, I believe everything that's happened in my life has been part and parcel of my life's journey. Uh, it's so true to the verse of Romans 8, 28. Uh, one of my favorite verses, which says, you know, all things work together for good for those that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. And so I'd like to believe that everything that has happened in my life, um, good and bad, has molded me into the woman that I am and has made me, you know, who I am. Wow, that's incredible. That's, that's really quite a, I know it's God and I know it's confidence, but, you know, there, there's, there must have been also some hard work. I, one of the quotes that I've uh, come up with in my, my own book is, don't wear your wishbone where your backbone ought to yes. be. You know, yeah. so it's not yeah. also yeah. about wishing because knowing you personally, I know that you've done the work and you've walked the talk. Yes, yes. And can and you it's, tell, it's been tell a us a little journey. bit about that? Yeah. yeah, it's been a long journey, Nishani, you know, if in all honesty, you know, when I reflect back on my life in, in my early 20s, in my late teens and early 20s, um, I think I was a young woman that was so full of anger, you know, lost in yeah. this pity party. And, um, you know, so many questions to God about why me, you know, why did I have to go through all the abuse? Why did I have to lose my mother at such a young age? Um, you know, why did I have a father that was so abusive? Um, you know, uh, I, I was yeah. placed, you know, almost orphaned, so to speak, you know, when they removed me from my father's care. And, you know, so many questions that, you know, go through your mind and you ask yourself, and I was so angry. Um, and I think, you know, eventually God brought me to my knees and just reminded me that I certainly was not the only person that had gone through adversity. You know, there are so many people yes. that have gone through tough times and have risen above those situations. Um, and I kind of had to put my big girl panties on, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and get over myself, you know, and it was a huge yeah. revelation for me, um, but in a much needed one. Um, and it was up until that point where I also had to work through um, learning how to forgive my, my father, you know, yes. um, and, and, you know, it was something that uh, Lisa Bevere um, uh, said, um, I think it was Lisa Bevere, if I'm not mistaken, or, or, or it was another speaker that I'd heard where they said, you know, um, when parents fall short, uh, we got to look at them as being the best parent that they knew how to be. And I think I yeah. came to that realization that my father was the best father that he knew how to be. And yes, he didn't measure up in a lot of ways, but I still needed to honor him. And so until I got to that point of being able to forgive him and to move past all the hurt, um, I think that was the pivotal moment in my life, um, you know, because it had held me back for so many years. Um, but, you know, getting to that point of letting go and letting God work and heal my heart, um, and yes, you know, there was still a lot of healing that came years after that, but that was a pivotal moment in my life and, and the healing journey that started. Mm -hmm. It's so, so, so interesting what you said that you had to put your big girl Brooks on and uh, <laughs> in the pity party. I, I always say to people, by all means, have the pity party 
but remember that yes. there's a curve. Give yourself yeah. a curve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like to say, so you know, you... Next day and... Yeah, sorry yes, to cut you short. I like to say, no? you know, you have your pity party, just don't linger there too long, you know. <laughs> Yeah, don't think it too long. That, that's good advice, actually, because I think yes. especially as women, we can get quite caught up in how we feel. And um, yeah. and that sometimes inhibits us from moving forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yes. so true. that's so true. But you've come a long way and you give so much to community. You give so much to church. You give, you've you raised two amazing, handsome young men. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Adults, both of them now. Um, and... Yes. Uh, Tell me, how on earth do you juggle all this? You, you've written a book that's going to be published by the by the Mrs. Globe uh, Foundation. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've written the book and I mean, just jumping to that. I mean, I've written the book. It's been a few years now, but it seems like the story is continuously changing. The title of the book is actually In Spite Of. Um, and there's so much that has happened in my life. And I'd like to think that in spite of everything that has happened, um, you know, I'm still standing, uh, God is still using me, he still has this wonderful plan and purpose for me. And so I'm hoping that I can bring it to a conclusion really soon and it can be published. And I, and I have no doubt that it's going to encourage and uplift and motivate a lot of women, um, especially. Um, but yeah, you know, just being a mom, uh, being a career woman, um, you know, also studying in between and trying to juggle all these balls and then also trying to give back to community, which is something that I'm so passionate about. Um, mm. I really think it's, it has to be intentional. You know, we can get so caught up, you know, in, in, in any one of these roles. But I think one has to be really intentional and deliberate um, in how we give back to communities. Um, and, and I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, for me, I don't always have to to, to look at it as, as it having being this big organization or a big campaign. But for me, it's about the little things that we do every single day. Yeah. Um, you know, in your, you know, blessing the people that you come into contact um, with every day, seeing the need, um, you know, God leading you to somebody that you can encourage, you know, there's different ways of giving back. It doesn't have to be, you know, these big projects or these big campaigns or that type of thing. But I'm also fortunate to work for NetBank. Um, and NetBank really, you know, supports their staff uh, when it comes to volunteering of their time and they come alongside you. Um, they even give you a small financial contribution um, to help the causes and to support the causes that you're involved in as a, as a, as a NetBank staff member. So, you know, I'm really, um, you know, so honored to be able to work for an organization whose organizational values align to my own personal values. Yeah, that's so important. And, you know, Rihanna, you, I know that you had a, a hectic childhood and life, life is not always um, glamorous. We were just talking before, before the session that, uh, you know, we're sitting up at home and, you know, there, there's nothing glam about uh, being in front of the camera and having, no. <laughs> having the spotlight on you. It's hard work. No, not at all. <laughs> but, and, yes, you know, yes. life gives you ups and downs. And I, and I just want to talk a little bit about yes. your health care and what that was like. Yes. And I know that you still have to see an on oncologist yearly. Yes. So that was quite scary, yes. Um, yes. quite sobering. And you went through quite a difficult period. Um, would would yes. you like to tell us about that? Because many women have a, a similar experience, especially with their ovaries and you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it was in 2004 where I had a partial hysterectomy. Um, after struggling for many years um, and having so many different gynecological procedures. Um, and after that, I started getting um, huge um, cystic growths on my ovaries, which just persisted year in and year out. And eventually um, I saw an oncologist um, and she basically said to me, um, it was in 2016 where I had to have emergency surgery. Um, and then a week later, I had um, a, 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 cyst a cystic growth again on, on the exact same ovary. Um, and when I was referred to this oncologist, she basically said to me, you know, you're in an early malignant stage. Um, I suggest that you have, um, you know, a full hysterectomy and you have your ovaries yes. removed, um, which meant for me at that stage, um, you know, I remember I was in such pain. I was writing my final um, exams for, for my honors degree. 
And um, yeah. I said to her, I can't undergo surgery because I've got exams that I need to, to, to write. And she said, and so how are you going to live with this pain? I said, um, I'm going to live with, you know, I'm, I'm going to really be strong because I don't like to take pain tablets. And, and, and if and when I do need to, then I will. But I'm going to push through and I'm just going to you know just to take this pain um until i can write my exams and the day after i finish i will then um, i can be admitted into hospital to, to undergo the procedure and i did that and so it was in august of 2016 and i only had the surgery in february of 2017 wow and so it was a, a few months of a lot of pain and a lot of struggle um, but you know i got through it and I remember going in for the surgery and I knew that my life was going to change dramatically because I was going to basically at that age be, be thrown into surgical menopause. And so all the hot flushes, all the night sweats, all the mood swings, the insomnia, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the symptoms of menopause, I was literally didn't have a choice. I was literally being thrown into the surgical menopause state. Um, and so yeah, it was a you know a life changing moment for me, uh, and there's so many other things about your body that changes as a woman when you go into menopause. Um, but I've been you know I've been blessed in that I've been able to take herbal um, you know medication to help me you know with all those symptoms. Um, and and as women you know we manage uh, we do what we need to do and we manage. And I think of late it's been a struggle because. Um, you know, a lot of my muscles and my joints and my bones have been affected. And so I've been seeing uh, a homeopath who's uh, put me on a detox and has given me some really good, um, you know, vitamins and minerals. And so my body feel like it, it feels like it's healing right now. And I'm getting all the different hormonal uh, replacements that I need to get through those vitamins and minerals. But it's been quite a journey. Yeah, well done. Well done on your courage through that. And uh, to also, you know, to be able to, do, to study, go back to university, do your, do your honours in that time, yes. Um, yes. it's quite admir admirable. Talk about big girl, Brooks, you, you're quite <laughs> a gutsy chick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, what, what, uh, what was key to keeping your mental state um, during these illness? You know, when you go through illness, you can become very vulnerable and very um, yeah. almost dramatic and, and, and sort yeah. of, um, you know, inwardly focused. How did you push through yeah. the pain to, to still manage and just, and I know we're women and, you know, we say we just do it, but, but what is key? Because yeah. there's somebody that's listening that wants to know what was key to you. How did you keep yeah. your mental state with several months, you know? Yes. Yeah, I think, you know, mental strength for me really comes from um, an inner strength. Um, you know, our mindsets have to be so strong and rooted in God. Um, and I know I refer to, to God a lot, but, you know, for me as a Christian and as a child of God, it's, it's, it's you know, for me, God has gotten me through so many situations from a little girl growing yes. up in, in a Catholic church to, to receive receiving Christ as my personal savior, um, you know, I've depended so much on God. I cannot tell you, um, you know, me also choosing not to take pain tablets, going through all these different surgeries, you know, only taking the pain medication when it became really, um, you know, tough to bear the pain. Um, it's yes. been also because my father was an alcoholic and just naturally uh, for me, addiction has become um, you know, such an important topic. And so without having to put my body and, and, and place reliance on medication to, to take away pain from me, I'd rather suffer through it. And so, you know, spending time in, in prayer um, and, and in the word um, has really been my source of strength. Um, and so, you know, it all begins in the mind, um, changing the mindset, changing the thinking. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, our thoughts obviously influence our our words and and our and our actions and our behavior and so you know I really like I say draw strength so much from God and just spending time in prayer and in the Word I can't think of a time that I haven't um, you know actually spent time in prayer um, be it the small little mini prayers or the lengthy prayers where we just led and convicted by the Holy Spirit but that's definitely I can say for somebody that's listening um, where my strength has come from. 
yeah, to keep that good, uh, that good solid um, mental state as well, irrespective of how you're feeling, which comes from from faith, really. Yeah. That's what you're speaking and I, you about. know, and I think I think it's also okay for us to say to God on days, you know, because we also human. Yes. Um, and it's okay for us to say on days when we're not feeling good, you know, God, it's not a good day, or I'm not doing well today, and I really need you. Uh, and yeah. to press a little bit deeper into God and lean a little bit deeper into him. You know, God understands. He's so familiar with us. He knows uh, what we're going through, what we're feeling, what we're experiencing. Um, he's not surprised or taken aback by any of uh, our feelings or emotions. You know, he's so intimate with us and he knows exactly, you know, we don't have to feel embarrassed or ashamed of saying to him, you know, today's not a good day. I'm just not coping um, you know, we can we can do that. He's a friend and a father, you know. Yeah, that's so true. And I always say, you know, God doesn't fall off the fall off his throne uh, because I'm yes. kind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um so um what 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 is what does your beauty routine look like? Tell us. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, yeah. How old are you, Rihanna? <laughs> I turned 48 in December. I'm really proud to say that I turned 48 in December, you know, and uh, my skin has all, hasn't always been the best over the years. You know, as growing up as a teenager, I always suffered with acne. Um, and, you know, as teenagers often do, we always picking at our pimples. And so um, I think growing up and then in my later years and, um, you know, also in the years that I was able to do modeling, you know, you, I think one of the key um, tips for me has always been is never go to bed and you know just making that you go to bed with a clean moisturized face has been really important and then the same in the morning when you wake up making sure that you're using a good moisturizer um, with a good sunblock is really important um, and so I've been using Eucerin. I mean, it's more than a century old. And, you know, I think different people use different products. You have to find what works for your skin. Um, Eucerin works really well on my skin. Um, and so also just exfoliating, you know, um, once a week is sufficient. It doesn't have to be every single day, but a good exfoliation helps. Um, and then most importantly, making sure you drink water before you go to bed. Um, not too late because then you're going to be up you know, during the night, but making sure that you drink some water before you go to bed is really good to hydrate your body. It also thins out your blood. Um, so that's become you know, a good regime for me to, you know, to follow. Okay, and uh, tell us a little bit about um, you know, going back and studying uh, while working. I mean, what do you have to say to people who, who've kind of given up and said, oh, you know what, that's, that's beyond me. I mean, you went after a world title at the age of 43, went back to university. Or what, what do you have to say about chasing your dreams and your purpose? Um, is it ever too late? And, and what is key to, to, to doing that? Mm. Yeah, no, definitely, Nishani, it's never too late to follow your dream. Um, you know, it was a dream that was dropped into my heart. You know, I wasn't able and fortunate to, to go to university full time. Um, and so I had started studying for, for my, um, my undergrad degree at a very young age, or just after I'd gotten out of school. Um, and for many years, I would, you know, skip a year studying through UNISA via correspondence. I would skip a year and then resume my studies and eventually after 10 years I got my degree and you know I remember so many times wanting to give up um, but it takes so much perseverance and so much discipline especially if you're studying correspondence um, yes. but you cannot imagine the feeling of of walking across that stage and when you're being kept and getting that degree um, you know it, it it's just a reminder of all the hours that you've put in um, all the blood sweat and tears because it really does take that um, but yeah, it takes a lot of commitment and dedication. Um, and then I took a bit of a break and then two years later went back and studied my honors degree. Um, and I've studied part of my master's and I'm hoping um, shortly to, to commence with studying my, my master's again. And so really it's been a personal dream for me. Uh, and I mean, I'm gonna be 48. So if you're thinking about studying, 
Um, and if you're feeling like, you know, the years have passed you by, I can definitely say you're never too old to learn. Um, so start, you know, the process today. And um, yeah, if you know, if you've got the commitment and and the dedication, if you've got that, that vision of achieving that, that dream, then, then go for it. Thank you. And you, what advice would you give to young girls um, who are in the modeling career, who are in the beauty industry, which can be so harsh? Uh, what advice would you give to young up and coming uh, girls who are wanting to pursue a dream in this space? You know, it's definitely, you know, modeling was also part and parcel of building also um, my confidence. Um, I was uh, an introvert, you know, growing up and um, it definitely does, you know, uh, put you out there. Uh, but I think for me, the biggest um, lesson that I'd like to share with young girls is that don't try and be something that you are not you know, uh, we had the definition of beauty earlier on and you know, young girls trying to emulate somebody that they see, um, you know, uh, maybe you've, you're a little bit overweight um, and you feel that you're not beautiful enough and you now need to, to lose weight and be thin. Um, you know, just be authentic, be yourself, show up every single day as yourself. Um, you know, the world will love you for who you are. You don't have to change who you are. Um, you know, the modeling world can be vicious. Um, you know, one day you're in, the next day you're out, you know, your look is in today, tomorrow your look is, is you know, um, it, it, and, and so it's fickle, you know, but don't allow it to define you. I think just be authentic, be yourself. And um, yeah, um, I think that's the best advice that I could give to, to young aspiring models. Don't allow it to consume you. Great. Thank you for that, Rihanna. That's good advice. Um, well, I mean, we've come to the time where, you know, I want to ask, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, it was it was such a wonderful um, surprise for, you know, to be invited onto to your show. And I think I'd like to ask you specifically, you know, you shared a little bit at the beginning of our interview about what Succeed is all about. Um, I think I'd like to know a little bit more about some of the causes like Rebel that it's involved in and how, you know, myself and, and, and people listening in tonight can come alongside you uh, and your organization and how we can support you. Yeah. So um, it started last year. I, I did a, I work for um, in, an international NGO and I do work in the space of sexual violence against women and children. And I was doing a, a project in one of the poorest municipalities in South Africa, which is the Eastern Cape and the Alfred and Zor area. And uh, stayed there for, for two weeks amongst the people and lived among them, amongst them and just um, completely immersed into the, the very rural setting. And you'd think that, you know, in 2019, that we would have, you know, there, there were long drop bathrooms and no internet and freezing nights, just some real, real challenges. But I think what broke my heart was the fact that women and girls did not have access to sanitary pads. Um, many of the girls had to walk to school and this meant that she couldn't go to school when she, um, when she menstruated. It also meant yeah. that uh, she was susceptible or left at home alone um, and she wasn't always safe. You know, yes, yes. Um, it also meant that, you know, uh, when when uh, when she did uh, have access to go to the to a store, which was probably it took us an hour and a half to drive to the store. And I must say, when I got to the store, I bought chocolate. However, <laughs> it, it is a half a day's walk to the store one way yeah. and a half. So it's it probably sure. maybe maybe if you're young, you can do it in a, in a lot less time. But what it meant is that when she got to the store and she had this money in her hand, she would have to choose between a loaf of bread or, uh, or something for her family that they could eat and sanitary towels. And for me, that is a yeah. violent choice. That in itself is a violent act against women to, to, to be able to choose that. It just doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's 2020 yeah. and we should have solved this problem by now. So Rebel is a 100% is a organic cotton pad. It's not a poor girl's pad. It was featured in the Vogue magazine as one of the greener options. Um, it's been endorsed by a gynecologist and it can last a girl up to five years. So I'm thinking this little box, I've got to get this little box 
into the hands of every woman and girl who is at risk of violence or abuse, especially. Um, and it's like I said, it's not just for that, but, but that's the main aim. And so that is what we're really about. And that's what we're doing, um, especially this month, Women's Month, especially with the focus on violence against women. We want it to be practical, a practical solution, you know? Yeah. So that's what yeah. it's about, Rebella. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's absolutely amazing, Nish. Johnny and I mean I know you've always been a woman um, you know like myself who likes to get involved in different um, you know projects and causes and just uplifting communities and so well done and I'm I'm really proud of you and so excited for the future of this organization that you've started um, and you know if I can get involved and, and, and assist in any way um, I think it would just be such an honor and such a privilege. So yeah, I wish you all the best and the greatest success as you change lives and as you go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Your blessings mean a lot to us. Um, and uh, if you would like to get involved, you can go to our Succeed Facebook page. There is information on there. You can like the page and you can contact us. And it's S-U-C-S-E-E-D. So you can go to the okay. Succeed page. Thank you, Rihanna, for that. And, uh, you know, we're coming to the close and I would like to ask you, what is, any other questions for me, by the way, anything? anything? No, nothing, nothing <laughs> at this stage. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. I would like to ask you, um, what is your message of hope? Not just to women. You're the mother of sons, young men. Mm -hmm. What is your message of hope um, to, to all of us? Um, what is mm. Rihanna's seed? What is Rihanna's seed? I think everybody, you know, is is facing kind of the effects of this global pandemic. Um, you know, so many people discouraged and um, just going through such difficulties. You know, our economy that is really struggling, which has resulted in um, loss of jobs, loss of income. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of families just struggling financially and emotionally and so many that have lost loved ones and lost family members to this, this disease. Um, and so for me, I think I'm reminded of that verse in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 to 10, which talks about you pressed on every side, but we are not crushed, we're perplexed. Um, but I'd like to just say that you know, God is, again, God is not surprised. He's not angry um, uh, and, and brought about this pandemic upon us. Um, he's not surprised by we, we find ourselves as, 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 a, as a country and as a, as a greater, you know, global world um, going through this pandemic. And so, you know, for me, it's just the job hope is that this too shall pass. Um, you know, stay focused and keep your eyes on God. Um, yes, some days may be, you know, a little bit worse than other days. Um, but, you know, it's a good opportunity for us going this pandemic to, to use the time wisely, to use our days wisely, um, to deepen our faith, um, to draw closer to God. You know, um, he's never forsaken us and he never will. And so as we go through this, um, you know, it's always so important to always see the greater purpose of everything that we go through. And I have no doubt that this whole experience is teaching us such wonderful um, lessons, lessons of gratitude, um, lessons of teaching us that life is, is, is so short and so unpredictable um, and that our days are numbered by the Lord. And so I'd like to just offer, you know, hope and encouragement uh, to, you know, to somebody out there who has perhaps been affected uh, by this disease, uh, to hold on, um, to, to, to lead on God, to, to lean into him, just to trust him. Um, he's never taken his eyes off of you, so you don't take your eyes off of him. Um, so that would be just my message of hope and encouragement. Thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to the interview or to say to us? No, just to say thank you so much to you, Nishani, for this opportunity and for the invitation to come on your, your program and um, to be able just to share with all the listeners that have uh, tuned in um, the evening. Um, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the interview and gotten deeper insights into who I am. 
Um, and so just really grateful for, for like the opportunity and just continue using this platform for the greater good. Um, you in my thoughts and in my prayers. Um, and yes, just really excited to see how I can partner with your organization, um, and come alongside you and, um, and just see how we take this, this message of woman empowerment and, um, you know, just empowering communities as well, how we take it forward. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rihanna. I just want to honor you today because, you know, we've, we've spoken about so many things. We've spoken about yeah. abuse. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about condemnation. We've spoken about um, women's health issues. Um, yeah. We've spoken about many, many topics that, that affect us as women today. And um, mm -hmm. I know that after a long work day, it's not easy to do this kind of thing. So I just want to honor you, want to honor your courage, um, and just say really, really deep gratitude uh, for coming alongside us. And you know, it's so funny you speak about your mom and being Catholic and having grown up. And my, and I'm, I mean, I'm holding a rosary in my hand actually. My, my cousin <laughs> yeah. just sent one over today. Um, yeah. You know, when she, you know, popped in for a gate drop. And I was just, you know, I just thought about the fact that you know sometimes we don't know, but angels know. Angels yeah. know. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, Absolutely. yeah. So thank you, Rihanna. Thank you for your for, sh for your sharing so openly and so vulnerably. Vulnerably, um, it takes courage. It takes courage to live so transparently. So really, really thank you. And on behalf of Succeed, um, and on behalf of Richard Maestri and Patrick Stevens, my my co-host and the the team at BI, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all our viewers for for you know for listening in every week that we've been going sometimes twice a week it's just been overwhelming your response your support your messages um it has been such a gift and a, a form of encouragement to us and as i close i just want to say you know may god make his face to shine upon you may you know his favor always and may hope always light the way thank you thank you goodbye thank Rihanna. You so much. thank you nishani appreciate that thank you bye-bye Bye-bye.